Where does Yuta fit in the narrative of Jujutsu Kaisen going forward? Rika holding on to dear life literally. And finally, why the crow's ear hustling may be an issue. But first, what's going on guys? It's been a while since you've seen my face and I thought since I just got back from vacation, I'd show you how beneficial vacation has been to your boy. Looking pretty, uh, got some color to my pasty white self. And now on to the topic the short chapter that was JJK 262. We know this chapter isn't a incom incomplete chapter. It's just a short chapter. Gege has no plans to go back and correct or extend it. It's just going to be its own contained short chapter and we'll move forward. Now, first and foremost, Gege Akutami deserves all the rest in the world. Take months, take however long he needs to because he deserves it. He's given us a polarizing and captivating story that keeps us reading week to week. Even people who don't like it read it week to week because it's hard to predict where it's going to go and it gives it a sense of freshness and fun. Uh, not saying every shonen is like, isn't like that, but they can be a tad formulaic or uh, easy to predict. Where do we go from here and where does Yuta fit in the narrative of Jujutsu Kaisen going forward? So first let's start by talking the brain hop. It's pretty obvious that he didn't take the copy techniques that he already had with him because why would he open up with Jacob's Ladder? A much more damaged Sukuna now, I'd imagine have more issues dealing with Jacob's Ladder. I know he has his domain expansion back now, but still. We do know that Yuta doesn't just automatically become an expert at the cursed techniques he copies. Think about the cursed speech. He eventually got better with it. So there's a progression and he just copied the body hop. So I'm wondering if that plus Rika's fully manifestation time limit kind of plays a part into how fast he could sort through the memories. Maybe it's a situation where the memories come through from the birth of the person to their final moments in chronological order. The domain amplification memory would come much later and as we know Yuta is fresh in that body and he has to get going. If that is the case then that would make sense why he isn't aware of domain amplification with inside the domain expansion. He just hasn't sorted through that memory yet but I don't think he's dead either. There is also the issue of chapter 230 I believe it was. The crows should pick up on Sukuna telling Gojo about domain amplification with inside the barrier. Now this is something I'm unfamiliar about. I'm just bringing it to your attention. I choose to read TCB as my like go-to source. The way they translated it makes it seem like it could be taken that Sukuna is saying that he did not have domain expansion within the barrier. I'm sure he'll address it going forward and it'll become all clear because after all, Gege does introduce things or will present a concept that is new or new information that may overwrite something pre-existing, he flushes it out after the fact. If you dislike it, that is your opinion and that is fine. I won't take that away from you. I can definitely see that. Rika is quite literally holding on to dear life, her dear's life to be specific. And I think this is saying that she chose to stay with Yuta in his original body because that is, that is how she sees him, that is how she views him. Even though the body is the soul and she should follow the soul to a new body, I think she is literally holding on to him for dear life to give him as much time to maybe try and return back to his original body that they stitched up. We never hear about Kenjaku saying anything about going back to a previous vessel or anything like that. The curse techniques that Yuta has copied through Rika digesting a part of that person, which hasn't been fully confirmed yet, but that does look like what it is, stayed with that exact shell of a body. We know that Kenjaku also made preparations in order to keep Kaiori's technique when he body hopped to Ghetto. He doesn't have Kenjaku's memories or anything like that. So without any time to actually make the proper preparations or even know what they are, it makes sense that Yuta just doesn't have access to anything but Gojo's toolkit to work with, which I mean is a pretty fire toolkit to have, let's be honest. We are quickly finding out the answer to that famous question, are you Satoru Gojo because you're strong or are you strong because you're Satoru Gojo? It is in fact because he was Satoru Gojo. He defined his strength. He is the pinnacle and he deserves our respects and admiration even after his death. Whether you like it or not, Gojo is not back and he is never coming back. But where do we go from here? We have a long time till the next chapter, which of course, Gege take all the time in the world. 
Yuta, in my opinion, is not dead. I believe they are going to fight for another two or three more chapters before the final verdict is settled. I also believe that Yuta will die here. Maybe it's because of the time limit ran out and they can't hold up the copy ability, but I honestly believe Tsukuna will kill Yuta before any time limit is reached before we could find out and Gage can just leave it a bit obscured. Uh, Sukuna's knowledge and experience is going to be what kills Yuta here. I genuinely believe that Yuta may get better as the fight goes on. It's only a matter of time before Sukuna gets fully tapped in and the more time he has to recover without any serious damage is only hurting the gang. So it just sounds like Sukuna would win at that point, right? Well, I think the dragonfly thing was an oversight or kind of a red herring by Gege's, uh, that comment he made. And honestly, this is complete headcanon, so take it with a grain of salt. I think Gojo resonated with Geto's soul, calling him, you know, basically like a quitter, like you're just gonna let him take over. And the urgency of Geto's soul to see his best friend, his only loved one, in harm's way created that opportunity for Geto to choke Kenjaku to stall him. I think Gojo will take over his body for a split second to make it look like he will do a domain expansion to fake Sukuna out. If Sukuna would get faked out by that domain expansion, Yuji can get switched in there and they can try and sneak him. Man, imagine Yuji with a split soul katana, the blood Hashira. It's just my opinion on where I think the current state of Jujutsu Kaisen is at. With this long break, I suggest maybe try and go read out Kagura Baki. It actually just dropped a banger chapter, truly a great chapter. And it flushes out the side characters and give them meaningful roles. The Magaka knows just how to handle support characters and especially with introductions and badass characters as well. So check it out, I highly recommend it. Thanks for staying for the whole video and remember stay normie, stay weeb, shit even in between is fine. Until next time, peace.